friends i welcome each one of you to this lecture on technology society and politics today's lecture title is technological revolution replacement of human muscle human muscle as the source of energy friends we know that in the prehistoric world two great revolutions transformed human existence they were as we already know as we have already discussed in the previous lectures the neolithic and the urban bronze age revolution the neolithic and the urban bronze age revolution so our ancestors our forefathers have moved to complex societies and their transformation the transformation of our forefathers started around 12000 and 6000 years ago respectively and we know that neolithic age began by 12000 years ago and 6000 years ago urban civilization started in mesopotamia egypt etc we call that the near east and we know that our ancestors have transformed from food collecting hunters and nomads in the paleolithic era which began by by around 2.4 million years ago to food producing society we say 12000 years ago which started with the neolithic era so by the neolithic era our forefathers started Uh, what may be called farming modern day farming so they started producing food and we call it respectively the neolithic and urban bronze age revolutions and these revolutions were basically technological revolutions that is uh, the neolithic society is so called because it was a technological revolution and urban Uh, bronze age revolution of the 5000 years ago or 6000 years ago that was you know uh, basically a technological revolution and friends there was a third great revolution in human history and which brought about tremendous changes in our uh, human societies we call this the industrial revolution we call this the industrial revolution so the first revolution was the neolithic revolution the second revolution was the urban bronze age revolution the time of pharaohs the assyrians uh, the uh, uh, i mean mesopotamians the egyptians so that is the urban bronze age revolution and there is technically a third revolution in human history uh, that we call the industrial revolution so as i told you industrial revolution brought about tremendous changes in human life and friends you see the two former technology revolutions that is the neolithic revolution and the urban bronze age revolution comparatively took many thousands of years it comparatively took many thousands of years you just imagine paleolithic societies began 2.4 million years ago and from paleolithic society of the 2.4 million years ago 
to the Neolithic society. That is 12,000 years ago. You just see the huge gap between the Paleolithic society and the Neolithic society. Paleolithic society began by, by 2.4 million years ago. And Neolithic society began by 12,000 years ago. You see, there is a huge gap. And the Urban Bronze Age Revolution again took place 6,000 years ago. There was a huge gap between Neolithic society and Urban Bronze Age society. Neolithic society began by 12,000 years ago. Urban Bronze Age society began by 6,000 years ago. So there is a huge difference of time. But you just see, the Industrial Revolution took place in the blink of an eye when compared with the previous changes, the previous revolutions. So the social and economic consequences of industrialization have been far reaching, have been far reaching compared to the earlier Neolithic and urban uh, revolutions. So friends, some commentators say that the term industrial revolution uh, can be exclusively used to refer the development of machinery. That is, industrial revolution was basically a revolution in the development of machinery, that man developed machineries. But friends, in actual fact, industrial revolution was merely one aspect of technical revolution. Of course, we can say industrial revolution was a technical revolution, uh, but uh, industrial revolution was basically one aspect of technical revolution. So technical revolution is a very co complicated and complex and very broad term, technical revolution. So industrial revolution was part of a technical revolution in human society. So then what is the chronology of the development of technique in human society? What is the chronology of development in, of technique in human society? Let us see. Uh, Louis Mumford, a writer, I have told about him in previous classes. He was an American historian, sociologist and a philosopher of technology. He says that the first period of technology revolution was until about 1750, 1750. Louis Mumford says that the first technological revolution took place until 1750. And he was arguing that our ancestors, this Homo sapien ancestors, we are all Homo sapiens, and our ancestors knew only hydraulic energy during this phase. They know only hydraulic energy. They have no idea about other kinds of energy. Right. There is no idea of wind energy. There is no idea of, you know, electric, electricity or there is no idea of any other kinds of energy. And they only know hydraulic energy that you can create energy from the flow of water. That was the only uh, technique that they know that energy can be produced. And according to Mumford, a second period of this technical revolution took place between 1750 to 1880, 1880, 1750 to 1880. And he was saying that this was the period of call. This period, our ancestors developed technique to use call for producing energy. And we know that call was the basis of, you know, wealth and civilization. Coal was the basis of wealth and civilization. Coal was the king of British industrial civilization. Coal made Britain a superpower. The resulting steamships and ra railway, railway locomotives. Friends, Britain was able to develop all these things, steamships and railways, uh, because of the, the because of the coal. And friends, Mumford says there is a third technical revolution that is the age of electricity. He was saying that the invention of electricity 
the invention of electricity that changed the entire human planet the invention of electricity changed the very way in which human societies are organized and he was saying that the invention of electricity replaced our muscles from engaging in laborious activities it replaced our muscles uh, from engaging in laborious activities so with this change with each change we know that uh, our muscles and its engagement to generate force was intrinsically removed so uh, you can see that when uh, hydraulic energy was invented when coal was invented when electricity was invented at each stage we see that our muscles human muscles were removed from uh, engagement in activities uh, which are thought to produce generate force but friends there is an another classification that is this writers argue that the uh, second type of classification in which writers argue that first industrial revolution took place in 18th century what i said short before short uh, short while ago was the classification given by the famous writer Louis Mumford that is hydraulic energy coal energy electricity this way we can classify technical revolutions but another classification is like this first there was an industrial revolution which was a technical revolution in the 18th century during this phase man used steam power and production was mechanized man used steam power and production was mechanized and there is a second phase that was in 19th century and writers say that during this phase electricity was invented 19th century electricity was invented an idea of assembly line of production was discovered an assembly line of production was discovered in the 19th century and friends we know that the exponent of an assembly line in production system was henry ford henry ford proposed the idea of uh, assembly line in production system and uh, since uh, henry line sorry henry ford discovered this developed this idea hence it was called fordism henry ford so it has become an ism so that is what is fordism fordism is basically various raw materials which are collected from different parts of the world where it is originated and they are all transported to an assembly place an assembling place so this place is called the assembly line so we have raw materials uh, produced in different parts of the world which are transported to a single place uh, where it is assembled uh, and in the assembling place uh, assemb uh, assembling place or assembly uh, assembly line the raw materials go into a finished product that is the called the idea of fordism so friends by 19th century this idea got momentum which was the basis of you know industrial civilization and it was said that henry ford developed this idea uh, for mass production from a slaughterhouse in chicago a slaughterhouse in chicago a pig farm a pigs are hung from a conveyor belt pigs are hung from a conveyor belt and each butcher in the pig farm performed only a part of the task of butchering the animal they may cut only one portion so this way each butcher uh, do a specific task on that pig so they will they may use uh, they may cut the uh, you know uh, skin they may remove the leg they may remove the liver so that way uh, each butcher is engaged in only one kind of activity regarding the butchering of the animal so henry ford this took this idea from that you know slaughterhouse and adopted it in automobile industry so friends this idea of henry ford drastically changed the way in which humans produce so this idea according to him significantly speed up production 
and reduce the cost of production. So writer said that there is a third revolution. The first one was the industrial revolution of the 18th century. Second was of the 19th century, electricity and Fordism. Then there is a third revolution. Writer say, what is that? Third revolution. Third revolution is during this phase, you know, uh, that was in the 1970s, 1970s. 1970 1970s during this phase what has happened in the human world in the human world we can say that automation happened automation what is automation uh, automation is the use of memory programmable controls and computers memory programmable controls and computers that is called automation so in production computer assisted memory programs were adopted in production computer assisted memory programs were adopted so we are now able to automate an entire system of production so what is at stake then when you automate production what is at stake who is going to be impacted friends now you are able to produce goods and commodities without humans so the greatest you know you know you know impact of automation is on humans because humans are replaced from activities in which they have to use their muscles so best examples of uh, automation these days are robots so i have heard that in kannur uh, there is a restaurant where uh, you know i heard that i didn't see it uh, a robot serve food to your table is that correct friends have you seen that some of you might have seen from in Kannur town. Uh, somebody told me, I think one of my students told me that uh, there is a, a restaurant which got uh, robots serving uh, food to your table. I don't know what it is, but it was uh, reported. So friends, a robot, use of robot is an example of automation. So the point is that, you know, friends, humans are removed from many activities. So human muscles are removed from many activities. So it's a revolutionary idea. Automation is a revolutionary idea. So friends, I decided that we are currently implementing a fourth industrial revolution. We are currently implementing a fourth industrial revolution. So what is it? This is characterized by the application of information and communication technologies to industry. Application of information and communication technologies to industry. And some people call that it is industry 4.0. Uh, Germans, particularly German people call this industry 4.0 and certainly industry 4.0 is built on the developments of the third industrial revolution that is automation. It is based on automation but it is an extension of automation. So what is it? And we know that third industrial revolution we had a production system, third industrial revolution we had a production system already supported by memory programmable computers so computer memorize events and it perform tasks based on that memory uh, feeds in its you know uh, memory units now with the fourth industrial revolution friends production processes are expanded to a network connection production processes are attached to a network connection. So third industrial revolution is automation and fourth industrial revolution is the discovery of network. So we can say that network is next step in the production automation. It is the next step in the production automation. We have not now attached a network to all the automated production system. People call this cyber physical production system, cyber physical production system. They are called smart factories. Now our factories are smart. Now our homes are also smart. Uh, our homes no more need humans. Our homes no more need mothers to cook food or fathers to cook food. Our homes no more need, you know, uh, the kind of, you know, uh, mates in the 
in the service of uh, people in the house because everything is being automated and you can control i have heard that some uh, homes have doors smart doors which can be controlled from america or britain or some people who are working in gulf they open their doors and windows through their uh, apps in the mobile android mobile or uh, uh, iphone mobile they can they are able to close the door and open the door they are able to switch off light and switch on light in their home uh, from abroad i have heard that such technologies are already available the smart homes the idea of smart homes developed so that way friends smart you know smart factories developed so the point is that here uh, people and components or activities communicate via network communicate through network people and activities communicate through network so production is now autonomous we are already automated production by the third industrial revolution now we have already uh, you know you know a no, production system which is autonomous that means you know no more humans are required no more humans are required so friends norbert wiener norbert wiener an american mathematician and philosopher reject all these classification based on different sources of energy that called electricity digital technology so we know that we were classifying technologies and industrial revolution based on coal discovery of coal discovery of electricity discovery of digital technology not discovery invention invention of coal electricity digital technology and so forth so on but for wiener the american mathematical philosopher it is the right it is not the right method of you know classification you should not classify technical civilization based on this you know raw idea of energy for him there is only one industrial revolution there is only one industrial revolution what is it it was related to our attempt to replace human muscles as a source of energy so for friends you imagine at our home for doing all activities we have to uh, use our muscle because our muscle generate force that force is uh, applied on things that's why things are changed so that way human muscles are a source of energy and he was saying that the moment our ancestors discovered something uh, which replaced humans using muscles for generating energy can be said to be industrial revolution so these are all you know hypothetical arguments uh, and we know that humans move why humans move why because we, we we move like a motor we move like a motor our body you imagine our human body our body is a mechanism which is set to make us act like a programmed machine we all act like a programmed machine you just think you are going to college you are uh, going by a bus you are talking to someone you are cooking you are cleaning you are washing you are you uh, are you know uh, cleaning your courtyard or you are cutting something you are keeping a uh, vegetable plantation or you are gardening so imagine friends we are all acting like a programmed uh, machine because we know what to do when to do and how to do because uh, we are not doing the all these activities instinctively we are not doing these activities instinctively rather somebody uh, somewhere has already put something into our brain and we know that this way we have to cook that way we have to walk that way we have to climb upon a uh, bus that way we have to enter into a car that way we have to talk to somebody so that means you know we all behave like a programmed machine so the bones you have the muscles you have act together to make your body move that means both the muscles and the bones are needed are needed to make the body walk to make the body uh, walk uh, run jump or perform any other activities that makes motion possible so 
uh, friends motion is all around us motion is all around the human body the human body muscles has generate uh, is generate is generating forces that act on it the force in human body makes a human to act like a machine so the human uh, human machine the human machine so human body is like a machine friends it's uh, the human machine moves effectively and efficiently and friends when was for the first time our early ancestors not only the homo sapien ancestors the early ancestors the homo habilis before you know homo sapiens there were homo erectus homo habilis uh, neanderthal so our early ancestors brought brought disruptions in our muscle movement which generate force we can imagine it was when our ancestors made tools our ancestors friends we know that 2.4 million years ago have invented tools tools from wood shell stone bones there, there were four types of tools our early ancestors not homo sapien ancestors but before uh, before the homo sapien ancestors we have uh, our ancestors early ancestors have discovered have discovered some types of tools ever since human society has advanced techniques to replace our muscles from generating force and we know our muscles generate force now friends tools wood tools shell tools stone tools and bone tools our our uh, you know you know tools now generate force in a better way and in an efficient way because we have brought about technique to generate force now no more we need uh, no more we need our muscles so the replacement of human muscles with tools continued in the paleolithic era the neolithic era of course you know uh, our early ancestors the homo erectus and the homo habilis the neanderthals uh, all discovered some not discovered invented some kind of tools ever since fr friends our attempt to replace muscles intensified this process continued and norbert wiener says that from that point of time we had started industrial civilization he is viewing that norbert wiener viewing that there is possibility of a second revolution there is possibility of a second revolution so friends that's a very important revolution that we are going to uh, witness uh, and it is already happened from that point of view what is that friends human beings are increasingly moving towards the replacement of human brains this is norbert wiener saying that human beings are increasingly moving towards the replacement of human brains for thousands of years our ancestors have invented tools to replace our muscles now so we have you know invert, invented water lifting techniques so muscle is removed from lifting water mechanized transportation we need not to use our legs to walk because machines will take us from one place to another place washing machines so you need not to use your hand for laundry works for washing your clothes because your hand is removed from washing activities so your muscle is removed so grinding machines to your kitchen purposes so we have invented fans the table fan the ceiling fan the wall fan which create flow of air in the room 
So our world is full of machines, friends, that relieve our muscles from laborious activities. Now we are at rest. We are at permanent rest. We ceased to work or move in order to relax. We are in a perpetual relaxation because machines will do everything. We have already become, become a sedentary creature. We are now a sedentary creature because we are not using our muscles for anything. But friends, our attempt to replace brain is very different. It's not like our attempt to replace muscles. In, friends, interestingly, in his 1964 book, The Technological Society, uh, Jacques Ellen has cited Norbert Wien, Wiener saying that uh, human beings are increasingly moving towards replacement of brain. So Jacques Ellen said this in 1964. And in 1964, uh, we don't know much about how human brains are going to be replaced because we don't have any idea about how brains are going to be replaced in activities. And friends, it was in 1964, Jacques Ellen said that, you know, Norbert Wien had, had reported human attempt towards replacement of uh, brain. Now, friends, we are all living in artificial intelligence. Am I correct? We are all now living in artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence has conquered our, conquered our world. Uh, now, uh, human brains are removed from so many areas uh, about which we thought that no machine can replace us from engaging in activities. You see, you have, you know, machine learning and data aggregation algorithms, which, is, which are routine in our life world. You have Uber and all our data aggregators cab services, they are able to find you the best and affordable travel offers in busiest streets in the world. Or uh, we have face recognition software that a machine can recognize the face of a person. In, uh, unbelievable. Look at the marvels of technology. A machine can identify, oh, this is that person. You see, we have speech recognition technology, Amazon Siri, sorry, Siri. For example, the Siri can recognize uh, your language. Language is natural because that comes from a natural human body. Because human body is part of the nature and nature produces some kind of, uh, you know, you know, uh, sounds that we say that is language and we express language in a particular modulation, particular pitch, particular pause in a particular way. And how machine can recognize that friends, imagine the marvels of technology, where are we moving towards? So these technologies friends are working very efficiently in areas about which our ancestors in the past thought that no technology can replace humans. So we have, uh, we have begun as homo sapiens using muscles for activities and we have transformed from homo sapiens to the one using machines replacing uh, muscles. So friends, our transformation was of course a transformation in terms of technique we use. And we can now call ourselves the, te the, the Tecano humans. We are the Tecano humans. The Homo sapiens transformed the technology against their own very nature. Once we have removed uh, our muscles from activities, now we are going to remove brain from uh, activities. So friends, this transformation is the greatest achievement in the evolution of man. So friends, this, this type of an evolution of uh, replacement of muscle as well as replacement of, you know, uh, brain has become an organized activity since the French Revolution. It was, friends, associated with enlightenment rationality. Man began to discover a rational structure in everything. Family you have, education system you have, relationship you have, production system, parenting. Parenting is a technique now. 
So friends, you just look at natural world, the dogs, the lions, the tigers, the cheetah, all of them um, foster their offspring, their children naturally. They are not using any technique. What are their needs? They have only two needs, the procreative, uh, procreative needs and, uh, you know, you know, food. That's only their needs. And they are nurturing their children very naturally. But friends, humans are not nurturing their children naturally. We are using technique. So parenting, we got technique. Health care, we have got technique. So in everything, we got technique. Everything is fixed now. You have no choice. The human agency is removed from everything. And you see, because we have rationalized the human world, we have rationalized the human world and we are very, very far away from nature. So uh, it was for the first time this rationalization started with the French society. It was Napoleon and Frederick the Great. Napoleon and Frederick the Great, they have you know, developed some kind of military technique. Uh, and organizational technique uh, in the field of logistics uh, recruitment of first personnel during war time. Then friends, the physiocrats in France used the economic technique. Then liberals, liberal ideologies used the technique. First, this way, technique started in uh, human society. So uh, we can see that all of a sudden, technique began to spread everywhere. Technique began to spread everywhere with the 19th century. 19th century. It was in 19th century that technique began to spread everywhere. And to technique to grow, friends, there are certain conditions. In every society, uh, a technological revolution takes place only if some conditions are met. Only if some conditions are met. And these conditions are like this. The first Every modern technique that your parenting technique, your uh, technique in the home, your technique in the production, your technique in the kitchen, which your mothers use, you know, all these techniques are not a sudden invention. It got a continuity. Every modern technique has an ancient, uh, you know, you know, an ancient ancestor. Friends, am I audible, friends? Yes, sir. Now audible? Yes. Okay, 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 okay. What I said, I forgot the point. What I said? It has a continuity. Yeah, there, no? It has a continuity. Ah, okay, technique has a continuity. Okay, okay, clear, clear. The first point is that? Technique has a continuity. Second, 
ദൃശ്യ മ്യൂട്ട് യുവർ ഓഡിയോ മ്യൂട്ട് യുവർ ഓഡിയോ ദൃശ്യ ഓക്കെ 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 ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് സെക്കൻഡ് ഫാക്ടർ ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് പോപ്പുലേഷൻ എക്സ്പാൻഷൻ പോപ്പുലേഷൻ എക്സ്പാൻഷൻ ഈസ് എ കണ്ടീഷൻ ഓഫ് ടെക്നിക്കൽ പ്രോഗ്രസ് ദർ ഇസ് എ ക്ലോസ് ലിങ്ക് ബിറ്റ്വീൻ പോപ്പുലേഷൻ ആൻഡ് ദ ടെക്നിക് യു ആർ ഗോയിങ് ടു ഡെവലപ്പ് ബിക്കോസ് സിൻസ് പോപ്പുലേഷൻ ഗ്രോസ് needs also emerge needs also emerge and these needs can be met only by technical innovations so first one is that you know uh, technique has a continuity second is that technique has a connection with the population uh, growth the third condition is that friends an economic milieu an economic milieu that is uh, the economy of your society should facilitate innovation in technique the economy of your society should facilitate innovation in technique that's the second point so the third point and the fourth condition is that friends it's the most decisive condition it is the most decisive condition what is that plasticity of the society that technique will grow only in such a society where a social milieu exist that is a, a terminology used by jacques ellen what is that friends in every society technical progress will be stopped by two important things one is religion second is social taboos in societies where social taboos exist no technical progress is possible in society where religion is so dominant no te- technical progress is possible friends this happened in the christian europe technical progress was difficult in europe because christianity prevented man from engaging in activities which lead to technical innovations so these societies of europe were highly uh, taboo societies and also religious societies so for about se- uh, centuries europe was not able to uh, you know discover something and it happened only in the modern world that from galileo to newton a scientific revolution occurred it is only during that phase you know some technical progress uh, happened in that part of the world so friends the social taboos always prevent man from uh, engaging in technical sophistication and friends now social plasticity is also very important without a social plasticity no technical evolution is possible you live in a condition of no social bond no social attachment no taboos no moral framework technique will grow technique will grow only in such a scenario friends that's why atomization of society is very important for technique to grow if you have no bond with the people if you have no bond with the uh, family if you have no bond with anyone friends no religion no god this kind of an atomized social scenario only technique will grow otherwise society will control you society will control your thoughts so this happened throughout human history so uh, friends that is why britain happened to be a center of technical progress during industrial revolution because they have detached from that you know roman papacy and in uh, britain a profit oriented middle class emerged the milieu social milieu emerged profit was the basis of inventions so technical movement in england was different from technical movement in other part of the world say france in america also there was a different reason for technical progress particularly fordism henry ford used assembly line because american society is very different compared to most european societies and it was only britain was the only exception that's why britain happened to be the center of industrial revolution and technical revolution of the 19th century and friends there are all you know brilliant societies in europe spain italy germany austria russia these are all brilliant societies but you know they were not able to engage in technical activities because their society had so many taboos their society had social hierarchies religion had tremendous hold on people so technical innovation was not possible and you see 
great innovations great inventions were claimed by these societies other than britain and usa many other societies uh, we know that most technical innovations now come from either britain or usa during 19th and 20th century but we know that some other societies also claim that they have all techniques they have developed techniques for example we know uh, hitler in germany and stalin in uh, russia claimed that they have many discoveries uh, they have ex exaggerated their techniques uh, perhaps there are some truth also uh, but friends the social milieu of these countries are not favorable for technical innovations and in india you know why indians are not innovating because our social milieu is you know wrongly placed our social milieu is very wrong because our society is highly taboo society religion has such a powerful impact in society and our economy has no uh, a kind of uh, edge on promoting technical innovation we don't have a social plasticity so friends only in such a society where exists a social plasticity economic milieu there is no social taboos there is not uh, there is no uh, a discouraging a technical atmosphere in only in such society you know technique will grow a favorable social condition is required so friends not a big inventor alone can bring you so many techniques our an isaac newton or uh, albert einstein or a uh, sigmund freud or or uh, charles darwin he alone cannot bring uh, you know technical progress in society they are theoreticians they propose theories who will bring application into their theories is very important or oh, there are people you know archimedes in ancient greece art technique but greek never implemented that technique so uh, throughout human history we so many people who had abstract theories about things but they never applied it into practice there were no applied science that's why i told you no big inventor like einstein or albert uh, uh, sorry uh, isaac newton or uh, galileo or johannes kepler or copernicus alone can bring technical revolution for the technical revolution to happen uh, you have to create a social plasticity in the society where there is no taboos no religion a favorable economic condition a social milieu, milieu is required a social milieu is required so friends replacement of uh, human muscle for activities is certainly the greatest invention of man it is the greatest invention of man because we have invaded nature we have invaded nature so this is the greatest uh, human uh, achievement throughout you know uh, the entire history of man the greatest achievement of man is the replacement of human muscle so we became sedentary creatures since the industrial revolution we have become sedentary creatures softer your hand more both beautiful you are now more soft your hand more beautiful you are that is the more modern standard of beauty because people never say you are a beautiful person if you have a hand that is much stronger much, much healthy and much you know with so many muscles you know people never say that you are beautiful so softer your hand is more beautiful you are that more beauty standards of the modern world because that is sedentary lifestyle so you you got you know a more glassy skin if you if you have more glassy skin more the standards the beauty you have people say that you are more beautiful because you have got a glassy skin more glowing skin you have friends people say you are more beautiful so more the softness more that people say you are beautiful today muscle is not the standard of beauty in human world so the sedentary qualities are what make what makes you a best person a, a, a beautiful person according to the present day standards of beauty so friends in our world beauty beauty in our old world in the old world friends uh, beauty was physique more the muscle you have more the beauty you got muscle movements your strength of hand the strength of your legs counted as beauty in the ancient world or in the in the in the prehistoric world friends notice those bodybuilders you have they are big biceps and triceps and they exhibit it for pleasure viewing friends but those big flesh shaped body 
the good looking body they have is good for nothing it is it cannot be used for any kind of activities their biceps and triceps are for pleasure viewing only see look up on the way in which human society is in evolving in terms of technique so those body structures of the body so the body structures uh, of the builder bodybuilder denoted how much sensual the human world is our world is so much sensual that's why we see that you know a bodybuilder got a beautiful body because human beings have become more sensual are more sexual so our our orientation has become so much different from the ancient world so the pressure has become the basis of modern beauty standards so such a notion is no more prevalent was no more prevalent uh, prevalent in the uh, in the ancient world this is only a development of the industrial civilization everything remained artificial friends everything remained artificial the beauty is artificial more you are artificial friends more you are respected now this has become friends the standard of you know our civilization so friends that is all what i wanted to tell you through this lecture now the floor is open for discussion we can have questions